no, I do. Do I, I need? Yet, yes. Um, well, here, you were the one giving me dress tips. <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm to, oh, hello. hello, I'm just going to jump straight in there and just say, um, Peter, when you began with a clean slate of the in-between, where did you start? Because this is a, someone else's idea of heaven, well, the, the in-between land. Where did you start? It's clean slate land. What was your first thought? Well, the, the in-between um, that we did for the movie, it's a little bit different to the way it's described in the book. And, and even the philosophy towards it, we, we decided to go in a different direction than what is in the book, but we what what interested us um, when we were developing the script was the concept that the in between is not a physical location. Um, it's not a it's not an actual place, as it were. So, in other words, what's being depicted on screen isn't a, a, a view of the, of what the afterlife is supposed to look like. It's not our version of heaven or it's not our version of what you're going to see when you die. What, what we, what we um, the way that we approached it um, was the idea that when Susie, when Susie dies and her spirit is now separate to, to her body, she basically is not anchored in any physical place. So the in-between is her subconscious. So just like, you know, it's as if um, when she's alive, you know, she dreams at night, we all, we all dream at night, um, but she now is, she's permanently in the world of dreams, she, she, her, her mind is permanently in the subconscious state, so so when we were developing the, the script, that was um, always in the back of our mind, that we were, every time we went to Susie's point of view in the story, we were entering her subconscious rather than being, um, you know, than sort of filming or creating a practical location. So we were able to use dream imagery and metaphor and, um, you know, sort of that, that type of stuff. And, um, sure, sir. We obviously, you know, you spent a lot of the film in the in-between. Were you working, yeah, what was that process? Were you working in green screen a lot or is it, is it a lonely world in the in-between or did you have the other actors there with you during the process? Yes, it was very lonely. I anyone to talk to. No, it was, um, I thought it was going to be more difficult than it actually was. I think, it was blue screen, by the way. Um, I think because Pete has worked with it quite a bit, um, I felt very safe. And I felt, um, I mean, I, I knew that the vision they had for this movie was very strong, and, and that's nice. I like um, working with a director, and in this case, sort of, in a way, three directors, um, who knew what they wanted. And Pete would talk to me during takes and describe what was going on in the scene. So it was very easy to, um, to react. And we had music that would reflect the mood of the scene. And um, I think the music helped me more than anything else, really, um, especially for the emotional scene. I mean, we used it probably every day. For the bathroom scene in particular, we had this really haunting music. I can't remember what it was that Pete used. but. Um, that was a very intense day. Um, yeah, it was it was nice though. It was a good experience. And the drinks good. Recommend I like I yeah. go on a holiday. I like it there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of going Not there this summer. Not, Not yet. yet. So, 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 so it's a two-way ticket. <laughs> as long as you can come back, yeah. yeah. But I would recommend it though.